Salí de Cuba, de enterrado mi 
Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty God and Father, it is our certain faith that your Son who died on the cross was raised from the dead, the first fruit of all who have fallen asleep. Grant that through this mystery, your servant Edith, who has gone to her rest in Christ, may share in the joys of his resurrection. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the uni unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Our first reading is from the book of Ecclesiastes. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to search and a time to give up, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war, and a time for peace. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The word of the Lord. Please be seated. My dear friends, the Leon family, on behalf of Cardinal Tobin and the entire community of the Sacred Heart Basilica and the Archdiocese of Newark we would like to ex extend to you our condolences. Uh, I don't like saying the loss of our loved one, right? We usually say those things. But for us Christians, and this is a Christian burial, for us Christians, we truly believe, and like I said last night, our life only changes with death. This is not the end. And I know and I understand that no matter what I say to you here today, that is not going to fill the void that Mamita is living in your heart, right? It's never gonna do that. But I hope that you can find consolation in your faith, that you find consolation in what we believe as Christians, that a better place awaits us in heaven. 
I want to make it there. Right? And I hope you do too. Because we want to see our loved ones. Let me ask you, if you have lost a loved one, do you want to see them again? We all do, right? We all desire that. And you know what? God promises that. That we will be reunited once again. That because of His Son, Jesus Christ died on the cross, redeemed us, saved us from eter eternal damnation, from death. And His resurrection give us, gives us life. We believe that the body, yes, will be destroyed. But our soul, if we keep the faith, will remain. And we'll reach that place the, that we all hope for. Believe me, I wish for a word with peace and justice. I want that. I desire that. But I know I don't want to remain in this world. I want to be in that place that Jesus has for me and for you and for Edith. The place where there will be no crying, no pain, no suffering, no poverty. <laughs> oh man, I wish that so much. Do you wish that? And so, the death of our brothers and sisters who go before us is a reminder for us that no one will escape this moment, my brothers and sisters. We read it in the first reading. There's a time for everything, and this is one of them. You and I will be there one day. But the thing is that this passing of our brothers and sisters is a reminder for all of us of our brevity here on earth and to the need and for the need to be prepared for this moment. We do not know the day, nor the time, nor the hour, right? So the death of our brothers and sisters is a reminder of that. What do I need to do to be prepared? First, how's your relationship with God? Do you have one? If you do, how is it? For young people here, maybe even older for us as well, how's your relationship with your parents? You know the commandment, honor your mother and your father? Do you need to reconcile with them? Do you need to forgive them? Do you need to reconcile with your brothers and sisters, your siblings? <laughs> Those are the things that remind us this moment in life. And that's the way we need to be prepared if you want to see your loved ones again. Because for us to make it there, we have work to do. She's gone. And we hope and we pray, and this is the best prayer that you can offer her, best gift that you can offer your mom, this Holy Eucharist. And so we who remain have a lot of work to do. I myself, I'm reminded every time I celebrate a, a, a funeral that I have to prepare each day in order for me to be ready when I see the Lord face to face. In the Gospel reading, we read the Beatitudes, the be beautiful scripture reading that really is a model of how we should live our lives. If you do not know how to live your life and want to make it to heaven, read Matthew again, what we read today, the Beatitudes. And that's how we get to heaven, by loving one another. Because if you love each other, if you love the way God wants us to love, the world would not be in the way it is now. There will be no divisions. We will be united. We will be helping one another. Although he promised that the poor will always be with us, but probably they'll be better off, better laws better education for our children. No privileges here, everyone the same, right? If we loved the way God loves us. And later on, we're gonna hear Edith's life, a little bit about her life. I can't wait to hear that because I read it already. But I want you to, who do not, did not know her, I didn't. But through those words, I can say that this was an amazing woman. So let us continue then praying for the soul of our sister and help her reach to that place where you and I also wish to be. Please stand. Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father where he intercedes for his church, confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord Jesus, we join our prayers to his. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. In baptism, Edith received the light of Christ, 
scatter the darkness now and lead her over the waters of death. Lord, in your mercy. Our sister Edith was nourished at the table of the Savior. Welcome her into the halls of the heavenly banquet. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Many friends and, and members of our families have gone before us and await the kingdom. Grant them an everlasting home with your son. Lord, in your mercy. Many people die by violence, war, and famine each day. Show your mercy to those who suffer so unjustly the sins against your love, and gather them to the eternal kingdom of peace. Lord, in your mercy. Those who trust in the Lord now sleep in the Lord. Give refreshment, rest, and peace to all whose faith is known to you alone. Lord, in your mercy. The family and friends of Edith seek comfort and consolation, heal their pain, and dispel the darkness and doubt that may come from grief. Lord, in your mercy. We are assembled here in faith and confidence to pray for our sister Edith. Strengthen our hope so that we may live in the expectation of your son's coming. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, Hear the prayers of the Redeemer, Jesus Christ, and the voices of your people, whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ and grant them a place in the kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
Pray now, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May we accept the sacrifice at your hands. For the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of His holy church. Be near, O Lord, we pray, to your servant Edith, on whose funeral day we offer you the sacrifice of conciliation, so that should any stain of sin have clung to her, uh, or, or any human fault have affected her, it may by your loving gift be forgiven and wiped away through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In Him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certain certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord. The fount of all holiness, make holy therefore this gift, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held that worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Edith, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she, who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And now, my friends, at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The power and the glory are yours now. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously, Grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold Jesus, the resurrection and the life, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but I will say the word of
My friends, at this time of communion, uh, if you are not going to receive, if you are not going to receive, please just cross your arms on your, over your chest and I will give you a blessing. As we approach the table of the Lord, we raise our hearts and voices singing Amazing Grace as found in the worship leaflet. Oh, Lord. 
Let us pray. <laughs> Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that your servant Edith, who has journeyed from this world, may by this sacrifice be cleansed and freed from sin, and so receive the everlasting joys of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. I will ask to please be seated for a, a moment, and I'll invite to Roger to read the eulogy. On behalf of my three sisters, our entire family, I would like to thank the mayor, Chief Medina and the city of Newark, Cardinal Tobin and the Archdiocese of Newark, President Norton and the members of the Board of Education, President MacGyver and the members of the city council, President Richardson and the Essex County Commissioners, Senator Ruiz, Sammy, and Jojo, my incredible executive staff, my awesome principals, my dedicated staff, family and friends. I invite all of you to eavesdrop on this family conversation where you might learn a little bit more about my mom, our family, and perhaps maybe some personal reflections of your own that might even help you my mom would have liked that. <clears throat> Dear family, in the presence of these witnesses, Edith Leon lives in us. And I don't mean her impact or reach or even spiritually, all of that is true. I mean her blood runs through us, literally. We are here because of her and how we would do what we would do extends her reach hers and that of our ancestors. And she was teaching us, even at her darkest moment, some very important lessons and uh, important and valuable lessons about life and the life we live. One of her last wishes at the hospital before she was discharged was to remind you today not to forget her. And that would be truly impossible because that would mean not knowing ourselves. She is who we are, and her life's work continues through us, and she can't ever be forgotten. The lessons you will review and those you will teach will ensure it. 
So let us begin. I will start by getting one thing out of the way. One of the issues that has been randomly discussed, and I really don't know why, is the topic of who is my mother's favorite. <laughs> which child, which grandchild, which son-in-law. This eulogy is the tell-all. Nothing held back. We have had a very stressful last month, so let me put all of those worries aside for all of you this beautiful morning. It's me. <laughs> While my mother raised my three older sisters and me, and everyone has heard of our humble beginnings, a single mom raising four children on a $350 welfare check every month, she always knew what defined a man. On Father's Day, she would always receive Father's Day wishes from us because she was our mom and our dad. Lesson one has hidden gems to be a man. I begin with my three brothers-in-law. While our mother did not give birth to you, I know this because I witnessed it, she counseled you, just like she has counseled everyone she meets. In some instances, you asked her for it and got it. In others, she offered it and you took it. And in some others, she gave her indirectas. That's an indirect. It was like her ministry. She wanted her to know whomever she met as if she became bigger and better because of the breath of knowing you. She spoke what she thought, and if she thought one wasn't going to like it, she said it in a different way. Those indirectas, but meant it just the same. A man assumes responsibility for everything and doesn't leave anything to chance. She was old school like that. You're the man, be the man. You're the one who's supposed to figure it out, so figure it out. You're supposed to solve it, so solve it. And you did, and you do. The three of you are living examples of great men for her three daughters. Her grandchildren see the three of you as the standard by which their grandmother judges what was good for her daughters. So her grandsons know what is expected of them for their wives, and their granddaughters know what is, a, what is the standard for themselves. You serve the three of you as great role models, as men, husbands, fathers, and grandfathers. To my mother's seven grandchildren, who is grandma's favorite? Ready to find out? Yes, me, <laughs> Uncle Roger. To Frank, you were her first grandchild and you did it like she expected it. The first to crawl, cry, stumble, walk, and never fail. Elementary school, high school, college, you never skipped a beat. You were her first grandchild. You saw the task, which is what grandma considered so important. Your grandma saw the task. Adriana, you were her last grandchild and oh how proud she was of you. You left your husband at the United States Air Force Base in South Korea to volunteer as a registered nurse at McGuire Air Force Base here in New Jersey to provide medical assistance to refugees from Afghanistan. You are a shero in grandma's eyes. You were modeling for grandma when you need to get it done, right? You call a woman. You were modeling what grandma would consider getting it done right. Roman, grandma's 14th grandchild, will be born in just a few weeks to you, Adriana, a shero of a woman. You are our living example of who his great grandma was all about. Your grandma was a shero. Berto, you're such a great dad. Grandma loved the fact that you were the one going to court, seeking custody of your kids, and she knew you would get them, and it's happening one by one. Your love for your children as a man and a father 
is what grandma considered comparable to her love of her very own four children. She cried because of your struggle and compared your pain to her own, not because it hurt so bad, but because she knew that the love felt so good. You model that your children are your priority every day you breathe. Grandma's four children were her only priority every day of her life. Jessica, oh my goodness, you are just the perfect mom. You inundated your kids early with many opportunities and then concentrating on one as they got older in school and life. You are modeling for your brother and your cousins and, you are, and your work and what you're doing is even impacting children here in my work in Newark. Give children everything early by exposing them is one belief that grandma said will better their lives. She could not afford for her children the blessings then that you do for your two great kids now. But she loved you for doing and being the mom that you are. Being the best mom you could ever be. Be the best at whatever you do. Your grandma was the best at everything she did. Anita, grandma knew that the children with exceptionalities you were teaching were going to be so much better because of your mothering instincts and an incredible teacher you are. That's why God blessed you with two beautiful boys and you are teaching them so much and doing it so well. Your grandmother was teaching her children and each of you. Your grandmother did not have a teaching certificate, but she was a teacher. Carla, of the list of proudest moments grandma has of you, I will talk about two. The first was when you finished nursing school. It seemed like forever, but you actually modeled getting it done. That's the Leon that is in you. You got it done. She was so proud of you and you're doing such a great job. The second was the birth of your son, Kai, her 13th great grandchild. In fact, days before your grandma's passing, he was just born and you had him sitting on her lap. You didn't wait. You modeled, get it done no matter what. And if it can be done right now, and if it can be done right now, do it right now. And you did. Grandma believed that getting it done was more important than not doing it at all or quitting after you barely started. Leons do not quit. But she also believed in doing it right away and not delaying the joy of accomplishments. And you modeled both of them. Shereen, Grandma loved you so much and was so proud of you because you're a single mom who is so accomplished. She was dreaming herself into existence through you. You have three houses. Before I bought grandma her house, she would always tell me, you know, Shereen has three houses. I would go, I know, ma. The fact that you gifted them to your three ch beautiful children is evidence of your understanding of what grandma would call leaving a legacy. You did it yourself. No one gave you anything. You struggled. You hustled. You did it. Grandma struggled, hustled, and did it. My mother's three sons-in-law and seven, great, uh, seven grandchildren have lessons learned, whether taught or modeled by my mom, that allows her to live on. Each of you has a piece of her. But the power of my mom is the teaching then and even now of the importance of La Familia. It is only when we are together that La Familia benefits from all of her teachings. Each of you has a part of her and only when we think of each other do we have all of her. I share this because the majority of you will be leaving to your homes out of state, some literally as we lay my mom to rest. And we, and we cannot cry by ourselves because of her loss when we can best celebrate her life when we are together. Thanksgiving at my house is on. To my sisters, to my three sisters, in the most rewarding work that I do, our mother often heard me speak of mission critical issues and concerns. 
She always counseled me and I always got it the hardest. This one was on parenting. She said, parents only want their children to be better than them. That's it. By making their children's dreams come true, as a superintendent of schools, she would say to me, you will have accomplished that task and that's it. I asked her mother, if all a parent wants is for their children to be better than them, then how did we do for you? She replied, eh. I said, eh. She said, my three loving daughters are better mothers to my caring grandchildren than I was as mother to them. She was proud of you, Anna Magali and Tanya. You are great moms for your children because mom did good for us. I teared up, of course, but she never wanted to see me cry. And so I held the tears back. I did say, well, what about me? She said, eh. <laughs> the four of us sacrificed it all in the end for our mom, just like her teachings, just like her life. And it was, when we were and it was what we were supposed to do. Our jobs, your husbands, your families, her grandchildren, your grandchildren, and even the births of future generations. Our lives were on hold for 31 days with a few ups and many more downs. Upon reflection, our mom sacrificed her life for us, her whole life for us. So she still has us beat by more than one half of a century. We owe everything to her. In her last days, mom was teaching us that God was giving us the gift of time. Time to pray, time, to her, time for her to hear our cries, time to feel the warmth of her hand. And I share all of this because we've come to meet great people in our lives, some who are here right now, who have lost family members similarly as us, and others more quickly and some even tragically. And any of the brokenhearted who may be listening to the sound of my voice, that regardless of the time you thought you lost or didn't have, the pain is just the same. Learn to value borrowed time, hug and kiss and call somebody you love, and do it today. Now, it's my turn. First to the Wiggum Funeral Home. I don't even know where to begin with thanking Carolyn and Terry. You are simply two incredibly special women in my life, and I thank you for the counseling and guidance well before my mother's stroke on July 7th, and every day until both of you and I draped my mom in gold satin sheets at my house, like the queen that she was, on the saddest day with her passing, and on her glorious moment when she met God. Ambassador Shabazz, you embrace my mom with love. I know you have a lot of love for her as you do for your own, and the spiritual guidance you provided me is so sustaining. Reverend Browntree, I thank you. Maria, you have been an angel. Thank you to Peggy, Joan, Anthony, Shamir, and Rob for your help and assistance. I am thankful and grateful to so many of you who are here with us today. My mom would be so upset with me if I did not say how much she loved Adele, Billy, Chad, Josefa, Barbarita, and Ramon. She loved each of you. I model of my mother's teaching, giving it my all. I gave my mom my all. In school, at work, in life, in hers, at her darkest moments, at my darkest moments. In these last few horrible weeks of my life, 
I did everything under the sun that I could do for my mother. This is what she taught me to do. This is who she taught me to be. You give who or what you love your all until you're empty. That is my mom's lesson that she is teaching everyone in our family through me and for those who have gathered here today with us as to who she was. My mother taught us to give it our all until we are empty. To my family and my friends, I am on E. And finally, to my mom, dearest mother, I know that you cannot come back to me, but I also know that I will see you at those pearly gates waiting for me. And on that day, when God evaluates and assesses all that I have done and contemplates it all, I know that you will be the one there to advocate for me. And for all that I have done because of you, and the man you taught me to be. I know you will join the Lord when he says, well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of your Lord. I love you, Mom. Take me to the king, I don't have much to bring, my heart is torn in pieces, it's my offering, take me to the king, truth is I'm Options are few. I'm trying to pray, but where are you? I'm all churched out, hurt and abused. I can't fake what's left. I'm weak, no strength to fight, no tears to cry, even if I try, but still my soul refuses to die. One touch will change my life. Take me to the king. I don't have much to bring. My heart is torn in pieces. It's my offering. Lay me at the throne and leave me to gaze upon your glory and sing to you this song. Take me to the King. Truth is, it's time to 
stop playing these games. We need a word for the people's pain. So Lord, speak right now. Let it fall like rain. Oh yes, we're desperate. We're chasing after you. Oh Lord, no rules, no religion. I've made my decision to run to you, the healer that I need. Take me to the king. I don't have much to bring. My heart is torn in pieces. It's my offering. Lay me at the throne. Leave me there alone to gaze upon your glory and to sing to you this song. Lord, we're in the way. We keep making mistakes. The to bring my heart is torn in pieces here's my offering lay me at the throne and leave me there I want to gaze upon your glory to sing to you to sing to you this song take me to the king My friends, before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our sister. May our farewell express our affection for her, may it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet her again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroy even death itself. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our sister Edith into the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. 
We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon her in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurance of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our sister forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In peace, let us take our sister to our place of rest. Querida, cada momento de mi vida Yo pienso en ti más cada día Mira mi soledad, mira mi soledad Que no me sienta nada bien Oh, ven ya, querida me ha sanado bien la herida Yo pienso en ti más cada día Mira mi soledad, mira mi soledad Que no me sienta nada bien Oh, ven ya, querida Piensa en mí solo un momento Date cuenta de que el tiempo es cruel Y lo he pasado yo sin ti Oh, ven ya, querida Hazlo por quien más quieras tú Yo quiero ver de nuevo luz en todo
querida Cada momento de mi vida Yo pienso en ti más cada día Mira mi soledad, mira mi soledad Que no me sienta nada bien Oh bella querida No me has sanado bien la herida Te extraño y lloro cada día Mira mi soledad soledad que no me sienta nada bien oh bella querida piensa en mí solo un momento y ven date cuenta de que el tiempo es cruel y lo he pasado yo sin ti oh bella Querida, hazlo por quien más quieras tú. Yo quiero ver de nuevo luz en todo. 